Hi there, thanks for joining me. This is a quadratic expressions and algebraic fractions video all about perfect squares. If we're asked to expand a plus b squared it would be effectively the same as having an a plus b times itself. When you square something you multiply it by itself. So we would have a plus b times a plus b. Now we can do that the long way. Let's see the normal way of uh, expanding by splitting the first bracket and having a multiplied by a plus b and b multiplied by a plus b. Let's, how, uh, let's see how that pans out in this particular case and we can, um, we can see a bit of a shortcut we can make. We can make a sort of a, a general rule out of this but uh, let's have, have a look at a lot of examples here. If we split that up and we had a outside of the second bracket and b outside of the second bracket like we'd normally expand binomial products we end up with a times a in the first bit a times b for the second bit, b times a which ends up being ab, and b times b which makes a b squared. Now if we write that out with a 1 in front of the ab term and a 1 in front of the other ab term, I, can, I think you can see that they're like terms and we can join them up. So what we can do is to join those two ab terms up and we have in the end a plus b squared equals a squared plus two lots of AB plus B squared. So that's an interesting result because we can have a, we can take that pattern and make a general principle out of it by having a look at that. So we've got A plus B in the bracket here to start with. So let's think of that as our first term and that is our second term. Let's see what, what in the end result of multiplying that with itself is. We have the first term being squared, that first A here gets squared. Then we have two lots of the first term a times the second term b in this second section. Two lots of the first term times the second term. We'll use that as a bit of a general principle there. And we uh, have as our final term the second term in our original bracket being squared. So in the end we have a perfect square of a plus b all squared being the first term getting squared plus two lots of the two terms multiplied together plus the second term being squared and that's a general rule we'll use as a bit of a shortcut. We'll see each of the following examples in the long form and using the shortcut general rule here for perfect squares. So we'll use that as our general rule across to the side there, so we'll just remind ourselves of that. Let's have a look at a, an example with a number in it. x plus 5 is being squared here, so it's x plus 5 times x plus 5 effectively. So the long version is we'd split the bracket and say x outside of x plus 5 plus 5 outside of x plus 5. When we expand that out we get x squared plus 5x plus another 5x from the second bracket and then the final term is 5 times 5. So really, we can join those middle terms together. There's like terms in the middle here, 5x and 5x. We can join those two together and get 10x and then 25. Now that's a decent result, but let's see that uh, if we express that last 25 there as x squared plus 10x plus 25, but then we rearrange it so that we've got 5 squared, we find that it follows that general rule again. The first term was x, so we have the first term squared in the, in the first position, plus two lots of the first term times the second term. Now the first term times the second term over here would be 5x, two lots of that makes 10x. So our result here is following that pattern we discovered from previously. And uh, then the last term is the second term, 5 in our original bracket, being squared. So you c I think you can see there that uh, our long result, and the result from expanding it fully, uh, gives us the same result as the shortcut version following the general rule as well. So what I'm uh, leading you to do here is to, uh, if you remember the shortcut, you'll save yourself a bit of time in a test if you know the arrangements for when one bracket is multiplying by itself. Let's have a look at another example. 3x plus 4 squared is 3x plus 4 times 3x plus 4. If we split that first term and have 3x outside of the second bracket, plus 4 outside the second bracket. If we expand that, and I'll go a bit quicker here, we end up with 9x squared, which is 3x times 3x, plus 12x plus 12x plus 16. In the end, when we join the middle terms there, 12x plus 12x became 
14 x uh, sorry 24 x there and 16 is 4 squared isn't it so let's see how that follows the pattern we have the first term squared the first term was 3x and when you square that it's 3x times 3x that's how we got our 9x squared there then the second bit is two lots of these two terms multiplied by each other. If we just multiply those two, we'd get 12x. When we multiply that by 2, we get 24x. And that last term is the second term of 4 squared, isn't it? So that follows the pattern as well. So whether, or whether you take the time to do the full expansion, like normal binomial products, or whether you take the trouble to memorize the arrangements here of the first term squared, plus two lots of the first term times the second term, plus the second term squared. That'll save you a bit of time in a test if you can remember that. And one last example here. We can split that first term and expand it using the long method. 4x times 4x, 16x squared. 4x times 5y is 20xy. Another 20xy from multiplying these two terms here, plus... 5y times 5y makes 25y squared. Let's just see that that follows the pattern as well. We have the first term of 4x being squared. 4x times 4x makes 16x squared. 40xy is really 4x times 5y or 20xy times by 2 for that middle term. And then that last term should be 5y times itself. 5y times 5y makes 25y squared. So in each case here, we can do the long way or the shortcut way. Okay, the same sort of thing happens, very similarly anyway, with expanding a minus b uh, squared. So a minus b times a minus b, if we split that first bracket, let's have a look how this uh, changes things. If we expand that carefully, a times a makes a squared. a times minus b is minus ab. Here we have minus b times a, which we can rewrite the other in the other order. The order doesn't matter when we're multiplying there. Now here, this last bit, minus b times minus b. A minus times a minus makes a plus. b times b makes a b squared. So when we consider that they have both a little one in front, invisibly out the front of them, and we join those up, we have that a minus b all squared ends up being the first term squared minus minus this time minus two lots of the two terms multiplied with each other plus the last term squared first term squared minus this time two lots of the first term times the second term uh, plus the second term squared so that'll be our general rule for this time. Notice the difference here this time, because there's a minus in our original bracket that's getting squared, we have a minus in front of the, just the second term. In an interesting way, in a quirky way, the last term still has a plus next to it. So it's this bit here that has changed from our previous examples. Okay, and in each of these cases, I'll go pretty quickly here because we could uh, slow down and expand this carefully at any stage we like, but if we split the, split the first term and expanded it normally, and we were careful with all our multiplications here, we end up with this arrangement here of x squared minus 14x plus 49 if we did it the long way, but let's see that it fits the pattern. The first term was x, so uh, in our result we have x squared, the first term being squared. Then we have the second term uh, made up of two lots of these two multiplied with each other. If we multiplied these first term and the second term, we'd get minus 7x. When we double that, we get minus 14x for that second term in our result. And the last term is just uh, the final term, minus 7 squared. Now the reason why that becomes a plus here and in our general rule is because a minus times a minus, a minus being squared with, each, with itself, a minus times a minus always makes a plus. That's why that turned into a plus there at the end. So we see it follows the rule whether we do it the long way or the short way. Here's another example. If we split that front term up we get, just to fast forward through here, 16x squared minus 12x minus another 12x plus 9. There's some like terms that we can collect here in the middle. So we end up with an arrangement of 16x squared minus 24x plus 9 and that once again follows the pattern. The first term squared Minus, uh, minus two lots of the first term times the second term, plus the second term being squared. So whether you do it the long way or the short way, it still follows the rule. 
Here's another one. A little bit more complex here with numbers and letters beside each other. Let's split that front term when we square those brackets and we get this sort of result. And let's just uh, notice that those, we once again have some uh, like terms to join here. And just to show you that it will, in the end, follow the first term being squared. The first term was 6x. 6x times 6x makes 36x squared. Minus this time, two lots of the first term times the second term. We'd have 6 times 7 is 42xy. Times 2 makes 84xy. And the last term is the final term, the second term being squared. We'd have minus 7y times minus 7y making plus, minus times a minus makes a plus, 49y squared. So whether you do it the long way or the short way, still get the same sort of result there. Uh, that's, um, that's perfect squares there. It's worth, I think, um, remembering or at least memorizing the uh, the shortcut, the general rule, because that can save yourself a bit of time in a test and allow you to finish off the test successfully. So all the best with that. PeterBlakeMass.com. We'll catch you next time.